So our next guest is a great friend uh, who over the course of the last years, not only on a personal level, but also from his profession, really st is driving the forces in the Netherlands. Not only on aspects on digital health, but also empowering patients, family and informal care. The way that the Netherlands, at present guided by our Secretary General Erik Gerritsen, is paving the way to get all the roadblocks that's present still in every step that we take out of the way is fabulous. Uh, not only by spreading his email address, and I think everybody in the Netherlands almost can dream his email address whenever you got this question to get it up, up and running, but also really making sure together with his team to really get those roadblocks out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, our Secretary General, Erik Gerritsen. <laughs> It's, uh, I was hoping for the Batman theme, but this is okay as well. Um, well, thank, thank you again, uh, Marie Ennis and Fabian, for your, your really um, impressive and, uh, uh, contribution and showing how important it is uh, to tell stories. And uh, that's, that's what you have to do uh, to, 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 make, to make a difference. And, Dave Letterman, uh, it reminded me uh, of, uh, of, the, of your first news show where you talked uh, uh, with uh, Obama. They, were, they were, were, were reflecting on his presidency, but then the conversation turned to Michelle. And in the end, Obama, uh, you, you see Obama uh, saying to himself, well, I was standing there all the time behind things like this, uh, um, uh, uh, with laws to, uh, to show and then handing out pens, but in the meantime, my, 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 my wife was changing the narrative of America. And uh, I think you and Fabian are changing the narrative of healthcare, so, so thank you. And please give him a, one more round of applause. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I'm very proud that the Ministry of Health, Welfare and Sports of the Netherlands is part of this continuing tradition of gathering the brightest minds and leaders in European digital health uh, to be inspired by what the future will bring us and discuss ways to make that future a reality this year in beautiful sieges. Or as the late Johan Cruijff liked to call it, Amsterdam Extra South. <laughs> However, I'm here today to break with that tradition. To be honest, I've had enough inspiration. I've heard enough people talking about leading change for a better future. And I bet you all have too. Digital health is booming, innovation is hot, but in truth, we haven't solved the big challenges we face today and that keep us from reaching the full potential digital health can bring us all. Challenges like how we'll be able, we will be able to care for the silver tsunami without a big enough workforce. Currently in the Netherlands, one out of every eight people work in healthcare, and if we don't change the current trend by 2050, they will, we will need one out of every four. They are not there. And like how will we keep healthcare affordable and accessible with more expensive treatments and more chronically ill people? Every citizen of the Netherlands paid 5,100 euros for healthcare in 2015, and if we don't change this trend, this will increase by 9,300 euros by 2040. And one of the biggest challenges in dig digital health is speaking the same set of languages, being able to understand each other and trust each other. But this, that is is essential in leveraging the advantages digital technologies bring to healthcare. And without these basic and very human values, we lose sight of what we are working on. And I believe we should focus these traditional international gatherings on celebrating the many different heroes of digital health, the passionate professionals who work tirelessly every day, the relentless patient advocates who share their compelling stories to keep us all on the right track, the rebels who defy the system and disrupt the status quo, the change makers who see possibilities and have the courage to act on them. We should celebrate them, learn from them, question them and embrace them. The one thing we can't do is to ignore them because they are the change. They invent 
they imagine, they explore, they create, they move, and they dance. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to celebrate one of my big heroes, the late Niels Schuddeboom. Embracing the technology always begins with sharing stories and always begins with taking the time to discuss the risks, taking the time to discuss the anxieties uh, and the worries. And that way we will see a landscape in which many more people than today will use technology. Well, it, it doesn't uh, matter to me where resistance comes from. It does matter if you can have an open dialogue about it to solve it. And resistance is a natural thing. So we have to dance with it and then it will be solved. Well, technology has a huge impact on my, on my life and on my business. I'm an early adapter, so, they, so to speak, yes. It's really useful for me to be in such technological times. If I, if I wasn't born in the age of network, my life would look totally different because I wouldn't be able to work the way I do now. When I can use virtual uh, technology and tools, it's much easier for me to uh, stay focused on my work and to be easily connected with all kinds of people. It makes me equal to others. And uh, uh, technology is, uh, has a huge impact on uh, how I uh, feel uh, participating in society. E-health is not about the high and complex technology, but, but uh, about the, l the low technology that can make high impact. I look forward to the moment that I can um, add my own data to my personal health record, that I can actually open my personal health record. My dossier is now closed, closed to medical personnel. Um, I look forward to the moment that I can swallow a scanning device which scans my body so I can skip the MRI, uh, which uh, spares a lot of time and energy that you can uh, uh, use uh, in moments of real uh, personal and emotional uh, crisis when it's really necessary to look each other in the eye. Times are coming that I can easily uh, check if I have cancer, which is very useful for me because I have a, a cancer protector gene which is broken. So I need to be regularly checked up uh, by a doctor to check if, it, if I'm doing well. But if you ask me how much energy it takes to be in such a process and if it would be useful to have a device to check me up in the home situation, it would be a totally different game. My son is now five months old. He is smarter with technology than I will ever be. And I know that up front. And there's no one telling him not to, to have a a personal health record or not to collect his health data because it will be normal by the time he is old enough to use it and there are a lot of elderly people um, now having worries but his generation the generation of my son when he is 70 years old he will live longer thanks to all the technology he has around him so we shouldn't worry about too much about technology. We should try to, uh, to, to keep faith and to, to move forward. Oh, yeah, thank you. For over a year, Niels was a valuable member of the ministry's board of directors our own chief experience officer. And as such, he got access to all the board meetings, often with a virtu virtual presence. And when dealing with the complex changes required for digital health, Niels chose empathy over distance, humor over judgment, and dialogue over opinions. He learned to dance with the system and be the change he wanted to see. 
sadly, he passed away from cancer late, late last year. And in his last year, he sought out like-minded people, heroes in their own right, and created a movement of torchbearers. And they are the ones who will bear his torch and carry his fire along with their own. They too are the change. And we even created an award for his honor, the Shaking Tree Award, and he received the first award himself, and he immediately passed it on to one of his heroes, Annette Stekelenburg. Ladies and gentlemen, innovation in healthcare is what we call a wicked problem. It is complex, and as it involves many different stakeholders with diverging interests, and the conservative powers often are very strong, working to keep the status quo. Governments have a responsibility towards their citizens to accelerate health innovation, so the benefits are available to them at the right conditions. And we need to ensure that digital health adds value to patients and keep citizens healthy, that it enables healthcare professionals to spend their valuable time and knowledge on providing the best possible care at the right place, that all digital communication is trustworthy and safe. Government alone can never bring the change we need. For this, we need the whole system, the whole ecosystem. And our role is to bring them all together, to show leadership and to go from making legislation to kickstarting the broad social movement, to empower citizens to become the masters of their own health, to bring cold technology to enable warm care, to take healthcare from the waiting room to the living room, with a strong focus on high impact, using proven technology and getting measurable and meaningful results. And these past few years, I have talked with many people and visited many organizations and events who show that meaningful digital health is possible. We kick-started this bottom-up movement at the Amsterdam eHealth Week in 2016 during our EU presidency, where we brought the whole ecosystem together and gave patients a big voice on the main stage. And in our national eHealth Weeks, in January 2017 and 2018, over 250 partners, partners all over the country opened their doors to peers, patients, and visitors to showcase their working e-health solutions. And in Tallinn, during the Estonian EU presidency, we joined our friends on the main stage to launch the Digital Health Society. And this broad, broad movement brings together stakeholders from the whole European digital health ecosystem to break through barriers that prevent the free, safe, and trustworthy flow of health data. And just a few weeks ago, we hosted the IHE European Connectathon, where over 300 programmers from digital health industry were working together to make their systems interoperable. And today, I am addressing you all here at the Joint HIMSS and Health 2.0 conference. Together, we are creating this momentum. Momentum for the social movement of health change makers. Dear friends, modern healthcare is a flourishing ecosystem of in interconnected people. And an ecosystem needs two things to flourish. First, a good climate that enables the stakeholders to do what they do best. And it's the responsibility of government to ensure that they incentivize, incentivize difficult word, sorry, go do it again, of a government to ensure that the incentives are aligned and that there are, is an open and level playing field for everyone from the current players to the disruptors. And this isn't a tried and tested model. We don't know how it will look like. We are building a bridge while walking on it and we don't know where the bridge will end. It's a learning process for everyone. And we stimulate this learning by accelerating breakthroughs with so-called health deals. We bring people together and we will not let them go home until they have committed themselves to creating a breakthrough. We reduce the risk for digital health investors by creating a seed capital fund. So they accept the possibility of failure more easily. And as you all know, failure is the best way to learn. Fail stands for first attempt in learning. We call on all stakeholders to report to us all legislation, rules and regulations that are blocking their innovation in today's practice. And as it turns out, nine of, out of 10 of these barriers don't actually re resist, exist in reality. They are misinterpretations or misunderstandings, or as I like to call them, mental prisons. They are only a reality between the years. 
And the tenth rule often stems from an outdated practice and can be easily removed or differently interpreted. And with the Health Innovation School, we invest in the innovation skills of the healthcare leaders of tomorrow. And here they learn how to become change makers and torch bearers of their own. And by, so by creating a good climate, we are all feeding this, mo this movement. And the second thing any ecosystem needs is the fertile ground. And that's the foundation on which modern healthcare is built. It's the standards and requirements and legal frameworks that ensure that all communication is safe, secure, and trustworthy. That we know who we are, that we know who we are communicating with, that our communication has not been altered along the way, that we understand what we actually mean, and that we can use the data in our own systems. So therefore, we created a National Health Information Council, a public-private partnership, including patients, doctors, nurses, other health professionals, insurers, hospitals, care institutions, general practitioners, and government. Or, as I like to call it, we got the whole system in a room, with the ministry in the role of a system therapist. Together, we have set ambitions, but ambitious but achievable outcome goals, improving medication safety, improving patient access to their medical data, enabling the safe data exchange and improving the quality of data, and one-time registration at the source and multiple reuse. And to reach these goals, we need mutual agreed upon standards for information exchange. And consequently, compliance with these standards becomes part of the definition of what is regarded as good quality care, a major paradigm shift. Compliance with these standards becomes part of the regular purchase process of health insurers. And you can only be reimbursed if you comply with these standards. Failure to comply will have real consequences. You will lose your license to operate. And this approach requires thrust and commitment from all parties involved. And we are trying to realize this by means of a kind of a psychological contract of self-binding mechanisms. And by setting the open standards for safe and secure information exchange, we create, we create, what do we create? The next page, we create a level playing field for the health IT industry and innovative new health entrepreneurs. Dear friends, it is at conferences like this that the whole digital health ecosystem meets. And that is, that is what makes these events worthwhile to attend. And it's up to us to make this conference a success. We need to go beyond inspiration and networking opportunities and, we, and use the presence of the whole ecosystem and momentum to create concrete breakthroughs. Use the sessions and workshops to make deals to adopt a working solution in your organization, to scale up emerging but proven innovation, to join a task force or a working group that will harmonize the exchange of health data. And this is hard work and requires personal commitment. You have to make it small enough to handle and big enough to matter. Matter for your peers, for people like Niels, Marie and Julie, and most of all, yourself. At the next events, we report and celebrate the progress we have made on these breakthroughs, and we renew our commitment for the next steps and apply the lessons learned. And then we move on to the next breakthrough. And the time for observing from the sidelines and waiting for unanimous agreement on a proposed solution is over. If you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem, and you might not get an invitation for the next occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need people who walk the talk. We need focus on unleashing the positive energy that is out there instead of losing time on analysis paralysis. And with this conference, we have created a unique event that enables you to take responsibility and become the change makers we need. You have to be the torch bearers shaking the tree, the first followers joining the lonely nut, but joining the lonely nut, dancing on the hill, and dance with the system. Let's go to work, think big, act small, start today. Thank you. It's no Batman, but it's great, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It will do. So 
the chief therapist on the couch, yeah. Ministry of Health. Yeah. So also in the interest of time, I would like to get you a bit of out of your comfort zone. I got like five questions, words. I would love to you to reflect on that. Very okay. briefly, very easy. Is, is this on? No, oh, it's. I think it's on. Okay. Uh, ah. Action learning. Yeah. What comes to mind, right? Uh, the only way forward. Can you explain a bit what action uh, learning is? Yes, uh, it was. I think it was uh, a guy, a Chinese guy named Confucius, who already in, uh, knew that uh, you learn only 10%. Uh, they, he said, uh, uh, "Tell me, I forget. Show me, I will remember." Uh, uh, engage me and I will understand and I act, act myself. Uh, it's nowadays called, I think, the 10 20 70 rule on how teams, people, and organizations and networks of organizations are learning. Uh, uh, so, yeah, action research uh, is the way uh, to, to, uh, to, to move forward. Uh, uh, so, we sh should move more towards that direction. The biggest challenge for the Ministry of Health in this perspective surrounding digital health right now? Uh, not be tempted by all those people who say, Ministry, you take charge, you take the lead, because that would be a stupid mistake, because uh, it's not possible. Uh, we, should be, we, sh we should keep saying we have to do this together. But a lot of people, they, th they think in simple terms, and then uh, they, uh, they think, oh, you, you, you just pass a new law, and then uh, everything will, ch will change. Uh, some politicians uh, like also th thinking in that terms, but the big challenge is, no, we, we either do it together or we'll fail. And it's also not about being doing it together, it's also, I think, about the, the longer vision as opposed to, for instance, for politicians, it's often like a, in the Netherlands, a four-year period kind yeah. of time. So that's where you guys, you and your team come in. So in all the things that you have been doing over the last years, what is it that you're the most proud of in terms of a systemic intervention that you guys have played out? Oh, there's too, too much, too much. Uh, but you, I, I think you want me to uh, mention the Health Innovation School again. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and yes, people start starting uh, uh, applauding, applauding there. I, I, I don't think, it's, I think it's the, the, the broad spectrum approach. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, getting, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wicked problem, but people always are trying to search for the, for the, for the easier or simple results. And it's also, di it's a difficult message, you know, that there's no silver bullet. And we have, you have to work from different uh, uh, perspectives. And of, of course, one of the, well, maybe I'm most proud of, uh, um, actually, as you are all ac uh, uh, asking of us, and, and rightly so, actually uh, uh, put our people who are suffering from a disease at that moment, actually in the driver's seat next to us in the boardrooms, uh, uh, and giving them the real voice. And it really changes the dynamic, I can I can. Uh, and again, thank you for you. including Niels, it was great, of course. Yeah. Um, another word, Europe. Yeah, difficult, <laughs> difficult. Uh, tomorrow I'm at a, at a workshop on interoperability and I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm heading the task force on, on interoperability from the, from the Dutch uh, 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 the, 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 the Health Alliance. And I already asked uh, two times in for, uh, during former uh, events, uh, just give us the standards you are working with, and then we just map them, uh, see what is similar, and then yep. we can declare these are the standards we are working with. Sounds and like an uh, easy deal, isn't and it? And we, we even uh, we translated our own standards into English and shared them, and, uh, but, and we only got a few uh, responses. As, and how simple can it be? Uh, so, uh, in, in, um, uh, so in that respect, I'm uh, uh, I'm a bit uh, angry because everybody's talking about and, 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 and uh, uh, the importance of, for example, interoperability, and then I just present them or, uh, a simple perspective, uh, action perspective, and I'm still waiting for for the for the for the suggestions of of other countries because they have no time. Hmm. And then I, I always say, if you don't have time, then you probably you've, you've, uh, there's something uh, other that you find more important. But that's uh, not what you what you what you said earlier. It's all about choices. So, yeah, yeah. this interop Europe, of course, uh, on the, on the uh, health is a, a national. Uh, uh, it's still a national responsibility. So th there's no there's no formal um, uh, uh, re uh, reason to uh, to do things together in Europe. But if you have to pick one. It's interoperability, and you don't need uh, the whole European decision system. 
because we, 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 try, we are trying to work with a coalition of the willing and doing. Uh, but the doing part, uh, it's still... Uh, oh, maybe I tomorrow. Don't know. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. So people, please, you have yeah. one more day to, get you to uh, send in your standards. It's fine when they bring the printouts to the meeting, I think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. HIMSS 2020, Amsterdam. Oh, you're always welcome. <laughs> okay, it sounds like a wrap-up. Thank uh, you very ma much. But maybe, oh, maybe we should ask the audience who of us looks the most like David Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm at, I'm at, at, the, at, the, at, at the, wrong, the wrong door here. So, but if, can we just, just one minute, one minute. You just want to have my just seat. No, just one minute, please, please. Yeah, that's what I was well, trying well, to well. do. So, uh, so now you're bringing up the beard. So, uh, hello everybody, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> hey, are you doing great? That's uh, Lucia here. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for seeing me again. Oh, that yes, yes. <laughs> uh, 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 that's okay. Uh, well, but, uh, you know, uh, we're talking about a new book here, Lucia. Uh, augmented Health. What the hell you mean with Augmented Health, man? Well, <laughs> it's, about what is it? it's about the end of the beginning. It's a new book, actually. It's about the end of the beginning. It's the end of the beginning Please of explain. digital health. Please, Please explain. Well, I think that at present, with all the technology that we have right now, uh, there is an option to really emphasize on it and really step on it. Okay. And I think that there's uh, new players that are coming into play, like the Apples and the Googles and the Amazons. And I try to put all of these together in one book in terms of the things that we've learned from the last seven years. And together with you, like the Health Innovation School that we co-created together, together with patients and Foundation Icona, I think that there is a real movement coming up right now. Not only in the Netherlands, by the way, but strongly uh, worldwide, of course. Okay, did you read the book already or not? <laughs> no. Are you look, it's you going to be to announced it? tomorrow. You look, can you just, uh, <laughs> you know, it's almost I'm 400 pages. Can you, 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 what's your main message, man? Come on. Get on it. Get on it. Get on it. Yeah, get on what? Stop talking, start acting. And because that's, I think, what, what's missing right now. Oh, right. There's a lot of other players, not traditionally from healthcare, now are entering the healthcare market. Okay. And they have a great user interface. They got money. They got great uh, uh, numbers of people. And um, it's literally in your kitchen right now. OK. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Lucia <laughs> Engeler, buy the book. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Erik Gerritsen, thank you very much. <laughs>